Hi, this is Cheryl McQueen, designer with Del Bellos Designs. Today we will do, be doing a lovely scene that I am calling Peaceful Sunset. Here are the supplies that we'll be using today. We will be using the Multifarious Smooth and Supreme cardstock. I have cut this down to be four and three quarters by three and a half inches. We will make a frame for our card with just another piece of cardstock. I'm just using a light green. This one I have cut to five and an eighth inches by three and five eighths inches. I usually do it five by three and three quarter, but I wanted to have a little bit more of the frame showing so to pick up the greens that we have in the card. Then for the actual card base, I just decided to use a craft cardstock. I took an eight and a half by 11 sheet and cut it in half and then took that and folded it in half to create my card. For our stamps today, I have chosen to use the Nellie's Choice. This one um, is called Bull Rushes 02 and the Lavinia Birds, which is LAV 097. That's the only two stamps that we will need today. For the inks, for our black, uh, we will be using the Versifying Claire Nocturne. And then we will use Distress Inks. We will use Dried Marigold, Rusty Hinge, Vintage Photo, Walnut Stain, and Black Soot. I'm also going to use the Tim Holtz Watercolor Pencils. I'll be using the Iced Spruce, Savaged Patina, and Salty Ocean. And as we get into the project, I will show that you can also use inks if you don't have the watercolor pencils. I will be using a um, white ink to create my little white caps in the water. Um, you can use a gesso or a paint, um, whatever works for you um, to, to get this effect. We will be using our blending brushes and a few of the little mini daubers. I'm also going to be using paint brushes. I have a couple here. The main ones I'll be using will be the flat brush. I like the way that this looks when we're trying to achieve the, the water. And then I have a very fine tip little uh, tiny brush here that I will do the white caps with. I will also be using my stamping platform uh, to do the stamping on. I like to use a stamping platform because that way if I don't quite get the image I like the first time, then with the stamping platform I can be sure that I get the uh, clear image with it going in the exact same spot again. To put our card together, we'll go ahead and use a running tape. That's just a little bit easier for me when I'm doing a demonstration. But you can also use uh, an adhesive like the Ultra Bond or um, any other paper adhesive that you've got. Finally, we'll need to be sure and have some water on hand. I just keep mine in a little spray bottle um, that we will be using when we're using our watercolor pencils. And I also will have a paper towel. So let's get started working on our Peaceful Sunset design. So let's get started working on our design by taking our art card. This is our multifarious card. And what we're going to do first is apply a circle mask. And I think I forgot to mention that in the supplies. Um, you can choose whatever size that you like. This one is uh, probably right around an inch and a half circle mask. Um, I'm going to put it up just fairly close to the top and on the left hand side. I like to use a little piece of masking tape behind it just that so it doesn't wiggle around while I'm actually doing my um, applying my ink to it. So what we're going to do is start out with our dried marigold. I'm going to take the dried marigold and I'm going to actually put it across the entire surface of the card.
where you're applying the dried marigolds, you don't have to worry about it being all um, solid one color. The variations in color as you're adding it on actually um, makes it look a little bit more realistic. So don't worry if you've got lighter spots or darker spots because that actually just adds to the, the visual. And one of the reasons that we are doing this all across the entire card is because we don't mind having it um, show through when we actually put our water in because then that gives it the more of a reflection of the sunset colors on the water. All right. And so a little hard to see sometimes with these lighter colors on the camera, but now we've got that base down. And I am going to go ahead and clean off my surface so that I don't get these other inks blending in too much with uh, my other inks as I'm doing the project or it doesn't mess up the back of the card. Even though the back's not shown, I prefer to have a clean work surface to work on. All right. So now what we're going to do is take our rusty hinge and we're just going to add a little bit of highlights, I guess you might say, in our sun sky. So we're just going to kind of put some maybe up in just one corner there a little bit more. Bring it down a little bit and over to the edge. We want to keep some of the marigold showing for the lighter shades. And then right here I'm going to put a, a little bit darker streak across um, to where our horizon line is going to be. Um, and so that, it, that shows that we get a little bit darker reflection on the water there. All right, so now we've got the rusty hinge in place. So I'm going to take my moon mask off. Or it's actually sun, I'm sorry, sun mask. It's a circle mask. And because that is so bright and so stark, I'd, I'd like to tone it down a little bit. I'm not going to add any more color to my brush. I'm just going to take some of the leftover very, very lightly back and forth across my moon I'm sorry I keep saying moon across my sun so it's not quite so stark um, and you cannot see it very well except in person but that also adds just a few little streaks when you just go straight straight across instead of in circles that kind of looks like a little bit of a haze or clouds going across all right, so now let's move on to laying down our straight edge so that we can get our horizon line. And what I do with that is I usually just take a piece of paper. We're going to go up just a little way. And I think what I'm also going to do, I'm going to go ahead and stick my card down to my surface so that it doesn't wiggle around too much. And, and you know, throw off when if I'm doing too much uh, pressure or whatever, it won't wiggle the card around and, and mess up my horizon line. And then I'm going to go ahead and take just a few pieces of masking tape or painter's tape actually. Take that and just tape it down in place so that it too won't wiggle around. Okay, so now I'm going to take my walnut stain and I'm going to take a dauber. So, uh, let's see. I, I like to 
number my daubers and my my ink that way I can match them up I don't have as much mixing of colors so I'm going to take the walnut stain and start out just by putting a light little line kind of across there to establish my baseline of my horizon now what I'm wanting to do is to kind of get this look of shadowy misty kind of trees in the background so I'm just going to take my dauber and just kind of twist it a little bit to kind of give that effect of the trees. I'm going to take it a little bit higher up over on this side. And then if you want to blend it a little bit so that it's not quite as stark with your circles, you can do that as well. Now then to give it a little bit more depth, I'm going to do the same thing with the black soot. But with that, I'm just going to do it in just a few random little places and not do it real dark. Right now I'm going to start out and see what's on my, um, on my little dauber and see if that's enough to give the effect I want. And if not, I can always add a little bit more of the ink. All right, and if you feel like it's too stark, I can take my um, rusty hinge and just lightly brush over it to blend it and make it a little bit softer. Not quite so stark and gives it a little bit more of that misty feel to it. If you feel like you need it a little bit darker on your line here, Go ahead and go back in. It's not going to hurt to make your horizon line just a little bit darker. Alright, so now we will remove our horizon mask and we're going to start working on adding in some watercolors. So I've got my three different colors of pencils that I'm going to use and I'll show you the technique that I'm going to use uh, with them to create the water. You can get the same visual effect if you don't have watercolor pencils. You can use your inks and actually use your paintbrush and dab it onto your ink pad to pick up the ink to, to create. Um, I like the way the watercolor pencils uh, look. Uh, it's just a, I just like it because it's, it's a soft but it's a sharp um, look as well. I don't even really know how to explain it, but if you haven't ever used the watercolor pencils, um, you will love them. So what we're going to start out with is our iced spruce. I'm going to take my flat paintbrush on the side over here. I'm going to mist some water that I can dab my brush into. Just have a little bit on my work, work surface. And I'm just, all I'm doing is dabbing that into the water to pick water up onto the brush. Then I'm going to stroke that, and I may have gotten just a little too much, but I'll just stroke over to pick up some color off of my pencil. And then just make strokes straight across. You don't want to go in circles. You just want to go straight across. Get more water on your brush. And just continue to do that. You're wanting to actually see the brush strokes in the water. If you feel like you get a little bit too much in one spot, just wet your brush a little bit more and instead of dipping it into the onto the, the color, gently lighten out the colors that you don't want to be that dark. And 
So just continue to stroke across the surface until you get the look that you want. You would like to probably have the darker spots. That gives you the shadows of the water and the depth of the water. All right, so there we have our iced spruce. So I'm going to set that one aside and then I'm going to move on to the savaged patina. This one is a kind of a sea green color to me if you want to call it that. You can clean off your brush on a paper towel if you'd like to or if you don't mind um, the colors mixing which we're going to they're going to mix anyway you don't have to do that. But you can do that if you want to make sure and keep your colors a little more pure. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to do some brush strokes randomly across the surface. Some darker and some lighter. Again, if you need to add more water to your brush, do that. Now, if you feel like the surface of your um, piece of your paper is getting a little bit too wet, then just take your heat tool or a blow dryer and you can dry it up a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to add just a couple more strokes of the Savage Patina in there. Get a few darker places with it. And I'm going to move on now to the Salty Ocean. Now with the Salty Ocean, we're not going to put it as solidly across it. We want this just to be more of a, a highlight of the brighter blue color. Same thing, dip your brush in water, then pick up some color off of your pencil. And then just add a few strokes. Now with that, I can add a little water just to tone those down just a little bit. But I want to be sure and keep some of the, the darker strokes because this is kind of a... a um, Reflection of maybe some of the deeper water. Alright, so just play with it until you get the color that you want. And that's basically all there is to it on creating our water look. I'm going to go ahead and dry it just a little bit again. I'm going to go ahead and clean my surface one more time as I've gotten all my inks and everything all over the work, work surface. All right, so now we have got our base started here. And what we want to do is we want to have a shot, kind of a reflection or shadow of our um, misty trees in the water. So we want to take a little bit lighter brown color. So we're going to take the vintage photo and we're going to take our dauber. Make sure I've got the right dauber on that one. Yep. And just lightly put some of this vintage photo down to show the reflection of the trees. It obviously doesn't need to be sharp, but try and follow the line of how your trees are. So like here it goes up higher, so I'm going to bring that shadow down into the water. 
So I'm just trying to follow the shape as much as I can. Again, just very, very light because we're just wanting to hint at the reflection of the tree line. And so there is our reflection on the water. Now in the sky, we would kind of like to get a little bit of a, of a, of a shimmer of the sun. Um, so in order to do that, we want to have some just very light little, I don't know if you want to just call them white streaks. So I'm going to take... Um, Let's do, I've got a me little medium sized brush here. And I'm just going to spritz some more water down. And then I'm going to take my brush and a clean paper towel or a piece of paper towel. And I'm just going to do a few little strokes across. And then I'm taking my paper towel and dabbing that up. Um, what it basically is doing is lifting the ink off of the paper. So instead of trying to apply a white, we're just going to remove a little bit of the ink to give us a little bit of that streaky look with the, either the clouds or the water, I mean the sun reflection. You can also drag some slightly into the sun when you do that, and that will bring a little bit of your um, marigold and rusty hinge color in across the sun to give it more of the effect that, that um, those clouds or those rays are kind of drifting around. All right, so now we are ready to go ahead and start working on our stamping. So I'm going to grab my stamping platform. I have a sticky grid that I have down so that I don't have to use magnets. I love using this feature. I also have a piece of paper that I put down around um, the edges. I'm going to go ahead and put another one around this one as well so that I don't get stamp um, images onto my, my sticky grid. Helps keep it clean and lasts a little bit longer that way. Make sure I'm not overlapping my card. All right, so now let's take, they call them bull rushes, I call them cattails. I don't know if that's a southern thing. But um, I'm going to lay that down there. Have that one just overlapping the edge of the card just a little bit. And higher up. Then I'm going to take my Versafine Claire Nocturne. And stamp down my images. put one over here on this side. Alright, and now we are ready to do our birds.
So we will put our birds up here in this side and I'm going to go ahead and have them overlap the sun. That gives us just a little bit of depth in there. Makes it not look quite so flat. and that pretty much takes care of the stamping part. So I'm going to take my card off of that. Make sure my surface is dry here before I lay my card down. And now the last step that we need to do before we put it together is take our white which I like I said I'm going to use just a white ink and I'm going to take the very fine fine tiny tipped paintbrush that I have and with that all I'm going to do is just kind of lightly add in some little white caps or water white water on there just kind of put them in in kind of random little places. Be sure to try and remember to put a little bit of that behind so it looks like there's depth there as well behind your cattails. Right. And you don't need to do a whole lot, just enough to kind of give the effect of the water there. Be sure that you, if you do use an ink or, or a paint or something, it's going to dry on your paintbrush. So be sure that you wipe your paintbrush off with some water to make sure that uh, it doesn't get all stiff and, and uh, gunked up. All right, so now we are ready to put our card together. So to do that, we're just going to start out by taking our adhesive running tape. Let me cover up my inks. I don't want them to dry out. All right, so I'm going to take my adhesive running tape. Apply it on the back of my art card. that there we go so we've got that mounted onto our frame and then we will take our card and do the same thing I like better. I 
get that centered on there. And there's our lovely card. Thank you so much for watching my video tutorial today. I hope you enjoy this peaceful sunset scene. Remember to check out the DelBellosDesigns.com website for more tutorials on the Design Team page. Have a great day! Thank you.